transgression and disobedience receive a just recompense of reward? How shall we escape if we neglect such great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that have heard him? Okay, folks, why don't we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Let's ask God to bless this word this morning. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless the word of God this morning. As we speak about this relevant subject and topic this morning, we pray that God, every ear would be open, that the minds would be uncluttered, the heart would be clear to hear a message from God. We pray that God, that if there be anyone who may not have a personal relationship with Christ, we pray today, this last day of June of the year 2013, they may come to know you, to know you as Savior and help every Christian to realize the danger of drifting. And we pray that God that you impress upon their hearts to have their heart in tune with you. Help your servant now as he preaches to say the things you want him to say, so that I would say the things that would be needful and helpful to your people. Please bless in Christ's name we pray. Amen. You know, I love the ocean. I love it for a lot of different reasons. I used to do a lot of fishing years ago, and I don't do it anymore because my health is not the same as it used to be. But one of the things I like about the ocean is going swimming. I always enjoy ocean swimming. Of course, a lot of times when I was younger, even as the years have gone on, I used to enjoy just getting to the water up to my chest or midway, and what they say, riding waves in. If you've ever done that, you know it's a lot of fun. If you don't make the mistake of getting sunburned, you put that aside, it is a lot of fun, but you know, when you start doing that and going to the ocean and riding waves in and going back and doing the same over again, after about a half an hour's time, if you notice where you started, it's not where you are. Mm. And the reason why is because the current and the waves slowly begin to make you drift a bit. And if you don't, if you're not careful, within a half an hour to an hour, if you start here, you're down over here. Well, as I thought about that, thinking about today, about the, today's topic, is so very important because we're going to talk about drifting. Okay? We're going to talk about drifting. We're going to talk about spiritual drifting. I think one of the dangers in the Christian life is the topic I'm going to talk about today. Because it's so very easy to begin here and wind up over here in a little bit of time. And if I had to say what would be the situation among Christians in America, I would probably say the word drifting. So if you're ready with your pen, we're going to cover something that I believe is so important. And let me tell you something else about drifting spiritually. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. You can never lose your salvation if you put your trust in Christ. Never. But you can lose your testimony, and it's not that hard to do. It's so easy to begin to compromise and make excuses about things. And we're going to cover that today in the message. I want you to pay attention if you are a born-again Christian. If you are not a born-again Christian, you need to receive Christ. You need to have eternal life because it is so very important. Because we know not what a day or an hour may bring. So let's take a look at our notes now. The danger of drifting. Number one, how can you tell that you're drifting? How can you tell? I want to give you several different things here to alert you if you are drifting spiritually. Number one, you can tell that you're drifting because your interest in the Word of God or the Bible decreases. Your interest in the Bible or the Word of God decreases. How important is the Bible to someone that knows Christ? Let me read to you. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not to wander from thy commandments. If thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. How can you tell you're drifting? Because your interest in the Bible begins to change. It begins to wander. It begins to decrease. In other words, the Bible is food for our souls. Jesus said man should not live by by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We're made up of flesh and blood. All of us human beings, whether we know Christ or not, we have a heart, we've got veins, we've got blood, we've got lungs, we've got a brain. I think. Okay? I think. But each one of us, there's something else that makes us who we are. And it's not just simply your looks and your strength and your 
your abilities, in your heart, in your lungs, it's your soul. And a soul has to live on something. And if you live on junk, you will live out junk. But the Bible is the word of God. It's food for the soul. And it's something that comes within our hearts and our lives and it feeds us and gives us the strength and the focus we need to live in life. But once you come to know Christ, the Bible becomes a book that you want to read. You want to hear. It's something that you long for. But if you're not careful, and if you're not careful, when you begin to drift, the interest in the Word of God begins to decrease. You've heard what Brother Coleman said before, how, Pastor Coleman, how many people are trying to read through the Word of God this year? I'm going to ask you a question. If you know Christ, why don't you read the Word of God? You can't live in this life for God without the Bible. And if you only hear the Bible preached on Sunday or Wednesday, whatever, you're living on a starvation diet. When a person begins to wander or drift, what begins to happen is they begin to decrease in reading the Word of God. Number two, how can you tell that you're drifting? You're drifting in your prayer life. You're drifting in your prayer life. Now, we take a look at the prayer life. What is prayer? Prayer is communication from a soul unto God. You can pray anywhere. You can pray in church, but most of the time, we don't live in church. We don't. We're at home. 